not all adipose tissue is made the same. The majority of adipose tissue that we have on our body is white adipose tissue, but later on in another module, we're gonna learn about a different type of adipose tissue called brown adipose tissue. So just to give you a little slight differentiation between them before we go into white adipose tissue a little bit more, white adipose tissue is typically what we mean by fat. It's typically what we mean by adipose tissue. It's the majority of our adiposity and it has a number of functions. So the main function that we typically know of when it comes to WAT is energy storage. You know, when we consume more calories than we expend, those excess um, nutrients are either already lipids or they're converted into lipids and they're stored within our adipocytes in the central vacuoles of our white adipose tissue. And that allows us to retrieve energy as fat and then metabolize it through cellular respiration when we do need energy to fuel the body's various needs, things you would have learned about in your earlier courses. Um, uh, adipose tissue also provides insulation. Um, you'll also notice it around um, major organs like the heart and the kidney as a protection and insulation in those areas. Um, it's also really important for fat soluble vitamin storage. So we typically don't recommend a very, very, very low fat diet because you do need lipids to be able to bring fat soluble vitamins into the body and to also store them as well. Okay. And something that we really only learned about hmm, a few decades ago is that white adipose tissue is also an endocrine organ. It also secretes various factors, specifically called adipokines, which communicate with the rest of the body. We'll talk about that more when we talk about the physiology of white adipose tissue. Okay? In addition to white adipose tissue, a small amount of our fat tissue in our body of adults is brown adipose tissue. Okay. We used to think it was just present in neonates. Um, the newly born have a large amount of surface area compared to their body volume, and they're more likely to lose um, heat. So brown adipose tissue we're going to learn is a more metabolically active tissue, and it has the potential to produce heat. It has a thermogenic function. Um, so that's why we see a lot of neonates, but we do, studies have shown that adults can have some of this brown adipose tissue as well, and we typically see it in this upper cervical clavicular region of the body. But I'll focus our discussion on this unit on white adipose tissue. And if you see a histologist ever talking about white adipose tissue, they just kind of blow over it. <laughs> and they're like, boring white adipose tissue because it looks like this depending on the stain that is used. So you'll see that it looks like a bunch of empty cells uh, under a microscope and that's because in order to prepare slides they wash it with something called a fat wash and that's going to get rid of the, the lipids that are found within the large central vacuole that is found within these white adipocytes. And that large central vacuole is where we're going to contain our lipids that are stored, okay? You'll also notice with white adipose tissue that there are nuclei, but they're tiny and they're kind of pushed to the periphery of the cell because again of that large central lipid vacuole. Okay. If we take an electron microscope and we look at these adipocytes uh, more closely, they look like balls <laughs> because they look like spheres, I should say, because of, again, the lipid that is found in there. You'll also notice on these slides all these little stringy fibers here. Okay, So these are going to be collagen fibers, and these collagen fibers are also found in adipose tissue, and they're going to be linking these adipocytes together, holding them together. Um, as a side note, adipose tissue is a type of connective tissue. Okay, it's a type of loose connective tissue we find in the body. Okay, another SEM scanning electron microscope showing with colors what our adipocytes look like in white adipose tissue. In green, you can see these collagen fibers again holding various adipocytes in this kind of clumping organization. You can't really see it on here, but also in adipose tissue, you're likely to find some immune cells. And remember, adipocytes uh, do have a potential to promote issues with the immune system and 
makes sense that since there are immune cells in adipose tissue that that could happen. Um, and you're also likely to see um, in adipose tissue lots of capillaries. You're going to see blood vessels as well, of course, because we have to bring in lipids in order to store them or take out lipids in order to use them. Okay. So this is one of the earliest pictures, uh, earliest electron microscope images of a white adipocyte, which isn't from that long ago. <laughs> like we're only really starting to study this these recently. Okay, so like I mentioned, and um, we'll see it better in another slide, we have this large central vacuole. You also, and it's hard to tell here, but there's a thin rim of cytoplasm that surrounds that lipid droplet. And then around the nucleus, here we have the nucleus here, you also see some lipid droplets around that nucleus and a bit more of an enlarged uh, cytoplasmic area there. And like I mentioned, the nucleus is often found flattened and at the periphery of the cell, which is a little bit easier to see on a light microscope. Okay, Some other things to look at uh, when it comes to the cytoplasm of the uh, that adipocyte. Um, so here we see again the lipid droplet. Here is another cell with another lipid droplet. So we can see the cell membrane a little bit better here. It's hard to see, but if you zoom in, you can also see mitochondria. Not that many, but we do see mitochondria. We do see the nucleus there as well. And in that cytoplasmic area, we also see some small lipid droplets. Of course, we'll have some endoplasmic reticulum there as well. But I think the main point of this slide is that like the activity of the cell is all localized in mainly into that perinuclear region of the cytoplasm, which is like pushed to the outside of the cell. So very different than we see in a lot of our other, especially more metabolically active cells. Okay, so again, what I'm trying to show here, a little bit more zoomed in, is what this um, cell membrane is going to look like. We do see small lipid droplets in that cell membrane part of it. Remember, there's a large central lipid droplet, and then around the nucleus, we might have these little ones. We have some endoplasmic reticulum. We might have some other vacuoles in there as well. And again, the point of this slide here is to show that the main, main business is found around the cytoplasm, okay? Uh, again, here's a better view of how those nuclei are pushed peripherally and found uh, typically in a more flattened state. They don't look as flattened on this slide, but here we see a more flattened one there. You could see it a little bit better, those flattened nuclei on this slide here. So I like this slide the best <laughs> when explaining um, what an adipocyte looks like because it kind of puts all those parts together that I just talked about. We have that large central lipid droplet that's found in a vacuole. We have that enlarged cytoplasm, area of cytoplasm around the periphery of the cell containing the nucleus, containing some mitochondria, com containing some endoplasmic reticulum, etc. But really, they do look pretty boring. <laughs> There's not as much activity as we see in a lot of other cells. And what's really amazing about this is that although they do look quite boring, there is a lot going on in this small region here. It is the small region here that's responsible for the um, the dynamic functions of adipocytes, their ability to communicate with the rest of the body, uh, specifically through the release of adipokines. So if I were to take adipose tissue, okay, uh, if I could suck it out or I excise it out and I spin it up and I separate it out into its parts, I'll notice that there's different types of uh, cells and structures in there. Okay, in uh, as far as mature cells, we're going to see adipocytes. We're going to see fibroblasts that are going to be helping to, to make the collagen fibers to link adipocytes together. We're going to see smooth muscle cells, endothelial cells, and blood cells. Those would all be part of the vascular system. Okay. We're also going to see some progenitor cells in there, like endothelial progenitor cells, again speaking to the vascular fraction of, um, of adipose tissue. Okay, so we see a lot of these um, vascular progenitors and pre-adipocytes as well. Okay, and we also see some stem cells in there as well. But the majority of active adipose tissue is going to be these mature cells, or they're going to be responsible for the main activity of adipose tissue. And then we have progenitors and stem cells that are 
point to mature or differentiate into these mature cells. So hopefully by the end of this section, you understand that the majority of fat in our body is white adipose tissue, which is composed of a large central lipid um, droplet held in a vacuole, and that although you would think that the main function of white adipose tissue is just energy storage, okay, it is energy storage, but it also, adipocytes do a lot of other things as well. And part of these other things, um, the secretion of adipokines, part of that is responsible for the pathologies we see with excessive amounts of adipose tissue, things we'll learn about later on in this section.